And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Anytime you're talking about fundamentals in a market and direction, fundamentals take a little bit of time to play out. We got crude oil today, kind of trading yesterday's value area really nicely, low to high. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. A trade routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. All right, good afternoon, friends and fellow traders. It's time for the recap. Monday, February the 28th, uh, hopefully you've had a good trading day. I know it's been an interesting one. Uh, thanks to all of you that joined me for the group coaching session today, and thanks to Spencer for uh, sharing uh, some of his uh, his trading plan and uh, you know letting us take a look and see if maybe there were some things to, to add to it. And very good trading plan, though, Spencer. We do appreciate you doing that. Um, a lot of markets today seem to, to be seeking – Balance, as we face um, much eco data this week, one that I omitted to mention this morning was we have the State of the Union address tomorrow at tomorrow evening. President uh, Biden is going to be um, talking about uh, his view of how the State of the Union is. Uh, we'll see if it uh, aligns with ours, I guess. Um as far as the markets are concerned, crude, um, there was no gap close, no weekend gap close today, but no real direction either. e mini S&Ps and the NASDAQ, both markets traded back to settlement and then some. Uh, we got a pretty decent close coming at us here this, the, this afternoon. Looks like the NASDAQ actually going to eke out a higher close. Don't think we're going to see that in the S&Ps or in the Dow. Uh, the uh, gold... Weekend gap closed, as well as a gap that was left from Thursday to Friday. Weekly kickoff seems a little bit resistant. Uh, we didn't quite get a very good look at it this afternoon or today, so we'll have to see what uh, what it looks like for us tomorrow. The euro weekend gap closed, uh, weekend low, or weekly kickoff, I should say, low, supportive. The 10-year lower uh, rates bring higher price. Above weekly kickoff high, my question is for how long? I'm going to be getting some information from the FOMC, not the FOMC meeting, but the uh, two-day uh, talk that they're going to be giving on Wednesday and Thursday. I know a lot of markets are really posturing for what's going to come of that. Uh, and the natural gas spends the day testing weekly kickoff low, still remains supportive. We're going to see all this in this in the uh charts pretty soon here as far as news is concerned a lot of it is you know of course based on the uh russia uh, ukraine situation uh you know there were supposedly some some t peace talks today um but apparently that didn't go very well um and i haven't seen too much information on it but uh the uh, sanctions certainly seem to be causing havoc with the economy over in Russia. The ruble got crushed, um, rates up to 20%. Um, you know, just a lot of talk about some of the oligarchs. Uh, I was looking for something here. Uh, Ukraine, not ready to surrender or capitulate to Russia, foreign minister says. And you know that's what those talks were about. The, the Russia was trying to bully them into rolling over, and I don't see the people of Ukraine doing that here. Um, it's about as far as news. I haven't had that much of a chance to dig through a, a whole bunch of other stuff, but... Uh, you know, uh, we are, again, looking for lots of data due out this uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, just to kind of go over it again. Tomorrow night, 
We do have the State of the Union address tomorrow during the day, PMI Manufacturing Final, ISM Manufacturing Index, Construction Spending. Wednesday, ADP Employment Report. A couple of talking feds before the semi-annual monetary policy testimony. Crude um, status report and beige book. Thursday, jobless claims, productivity and costs. Uh, PMI Composite Final. Finishing the semi-annual monetary policy testimony, factory orders, ISM services index, and that gas report. There are some short time frame bill announcements, a couple of short time frame bill um, auctions. Uh, and then Friday, of course, we know we're expecting the unenjoyment numbers or the unemployment numbers as they, they should be called. Um, so it's still lots of information, lots of opportunities for us. Throughout the week. Again, hopefully you had a, a good trading day. They're always challenging and there's always more to learn, of course. I've got the uh, sun shining brightly through my window uh, over here next to me, which is nice to see. And it looks like uh, as far as uh, temperature, it's 52 degrees here in Chicago. I'm looking forward to getting outside and starting my grill this evening. Uh, good afternoon, Spencer. I was expecting the ES to close on its lows, but market seems to have its own ideas, and it always does. Dan, what a day. Uh, held the opening range and, and view at most of the day. Closed above the open three days in a row. Uh, Tachyon, good to see you. Uh, another day of survival in the auction war. Vince agreed. It's always a challenge. Um yeah, definitely painted a lower area than for value area than Friday, though. Always be keeping an eye on value, of course. Uh, violent up banged into plus two standard deviation from VWAP for a while, and then went back to the opening range, hung out there for two to three hours, jammed higher for the close. Frozen Gumwad, nice to see you, and I just can't get past that name. Uh, so wondering what the story is with the fretboard, if you have time to tell it. Sure. Um, T.S., hope Biden brings with his white flag with him to the State of the Union address. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what's up with the Dallas Fed manufacturing number today? One expected 14 actual. Uh, Bill, good afternoon. Uh, I don't think that uh, the State of the Union is restricted time for top step traders. Uh, if it were, I'm sure you would get an email about that. Good afternoon, Norman, Ricardo, Michael H. Good to see you. Uh, grilling brats? Nah, probably some, some chicken breasts, probably. It's just something. Throw them on there and uh, get the grill going for the year here. Uh, last Friday and today's Point of Control told the stories. Michael H. All right, so... The fretboard behind me. Um, kind of a funny story. Um, played guitar for uh, a number of years, and uh, you know, I had a I have a very nice Martin acoustic guitar that that you know I take very good care of, and I didn't want to take it out to you know parks and and beaches and stuff like that, so. I was always buying, you know, hundred dollar like acoustic guitars, and um, uh, and uh, you know, as I'd kind of wear them out, or or you know, they'd kind of lose their their luster to me. I have a, a deck on the back of my house, and there's lots of trees around it. So uh, at the beginning, well, I was having a party, and I took two of the guitars and I hung them in the trees, and it really was a kind of a fun. Um, uh, talking point to start a conversation starter. There were a bunch of different different uh, uh, groups of friends that were all meeting here, and they were all very curious about uh, the the guitars in in the in the trees. Uh, they were just put up there for decoration, really. But I kept telling people that they live there. There's guitars that live in the trees around my deck and they're, they're, they're friendly. They don't bite. Um, and, uh, so another person brought one over that was just a kind of a beater, um, electric guitar and I hung it in the trees and, um, it stayed out there. Um, apparently, uh, 
electric guitars are not migratory. Um, they're static, so it stayed out there all all winter, and the fretboard fell off of it. So I just kind of cleaned it up, and I thought it would be kind of a much like the guitars in the trees, an interesting conversation starter in the background. So that's the story of the fretboard over my my left shoulder. I know, thrilling, right? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's get ahead. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts and kind of go through and see what we did today. See what we're thinking about maybe for tomorrow. Let's take a look. So here's the E-mini S&Ps. Um, you know, a big gap to the downside uh, from settlement. Uh, you know, a, a kind of a knee-jerk reaction on that 5 o'clock bar. Basically just kind of returning all the way back towards settlement. Now, we were talking about this on in the group coaching our overnight inventory, we, we had more longs than shorts because our overnight started here, and by the time we opened, we were up here. So we had more longs than we had overnight shorts. Uh, they have to, you have to think about where the market opened on uh, at 5 o'clock, you know, at night, and look where the market goes. So we didn't have any overnight shorts, but sure enough, we did bring price back towards settlement. Uh, we had, uh, you know, some range-bound activity. We put in a high. We, we, we put in a low. We took out that low. We're returning back to the high. This market is really kind of looking for opportunities for longer, bigger, longer time frame, bigger traders to hedge about against anything that might happen tomorrow, tomorrow evening, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, with the uh, the uh, um, some annual monetary policy testimony. Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna get our fill of the uh, Fed chief. Chairman Powell, uh, over the next couple of sessions, at least Wednesday and Thursday. Now, we've got two weeks from Wednesday to the next FOMC meeting, when, of course, we will probably be seeing an increase in, in, in rates. So a lot of posturing. A lot of posturing in these markets. Take a look at the uh, NASDAQ. Largely the same thing. Did the NASDAQ close higher today? Yep, it did. Amazing. Big jump to the downside. Dow was down over 400 at one point. You don't know where the Dow closed, but uh, not anywhere near minus 400. Last I saw it, it was down about 150, and that was about 15 minutes ago. So we may have seen the, the uh, uh, Dow come up and trade pretty close back to settlement as well. So the same situation. The market really kind of bringing value back inside value. What did the crude oil do today? All right. Big gap, no gap close. Kind of testing us up around weekly kickoff high in the overnight session, unable to get to it in regular trading hour session and closing pretty much center of the range from yesterday. We still have a gap with which to close. We have to see if that does occur in regular trading hours at some point. These markets are so news driven, it's difficult to predict. Uh, we can respond, however. Uh, here's gold, big gap to the upside, tested above weekly kickoff high, coming off, uh, opening, you know, relatively close to a reasonable overnight high. Testing back into range, finding support at Friday's value area high, and continuing to return higher. Where did we close? Let's see if we've got the right spot here. Uh, looks like we closed pretty much right at value area low, right around 1900, right back to 1900. Uh, 
uh, the Euro. Gap. Gap close. Range bound. Still really kind of uh, backburnering the Euro currency, at least for now. Tenure was interesting today. We know rates are going up, but rates went lower today, pushing price up above weekly kickoff high. Is this a potential for a market state change? I'm thinking more like we may end up range bound in this area for a while until we see our first uptick in rates, which we are you know, expecting within the next couple of weeks. And then we should see price come back in it down to more reasonable levels. Here's the 30 minute chart. The market opening uh, looks like the opening range may have been the low of the session. I don't think so, if I remember correctly. Resistant at weekly kickoff high overnight, supportive on its push, one little push back towards it, and then continuation to the upside. Again, how long can that last? That gas, testing weekly kickoff low, continuing to test weekly kickoff low as we speak. We're largely range bound. Here's the 30. Gap. Close the gap. In our test of weekly kickoff low. be interesting to see if we can find some decent opportunity on either side of that weekly kickoff level in uh, in that net gas. All right, all right. Huh. Trading makes me so angry. And I'm talking about making chicken on the grill. Yes, drink lots of water throughout the day. Staying fed and uh, hydrated, extremely important for traders. I'm pretty far from a rock star, although I've had my day. Cutting back on the coffee, too. Yeah, it makes you less jumpy. You usually have coffee until just about the time the forecast is over, and that's going to be it for me for the day. Dan, that's a good idea. I've got a blood pressure cuff here. I wonder I wonder if I've, I've, I've never th thought about or what well, I've thought about, but I've never actually pulled the trigger on seeing what it does to my, to my heart, my, uh, uh, blood pressure, uh, when I'm in trades, I'm, you know, pretty sure I'm going to be fine as long as it's a winning trade. Uh, do the new CME rates apply to combine or just funded traders? Right now, I think it's just funded traders, but we're probably going to um, to keep the real feel, add the new rates to the trading combine, but no data fees, just commission. How often do gaps close? Mostly, gaps have a tendency to close. I know I'm pretty sure the the, the results might surprise me, uh, not to, and I don't really dig for surprises all that much. Uh, don't trade hangry. Uh, this day in history, a couple of interesting things I was noticing. The chemical structure of DNA was discovered February twenty eighth, nineteen fifty three. They announced that they have determined that the double helix structure of DNA, the molecule containing human genes, the double helix. Uh, it seems like it would have been discovered before then, but I know it's a very small thing. Uh, Eighteen sixty-one, Congress creates Colorado. Territory. 1983. Some of you will remember this. The final episode of MASH airs. MASH is probably my dad's favorite um, 
favorite show. Therefore, it's probably one of mine. Somebody just asked me this weekend. We were playing a game, Higgy. And uh, somebody asked, what what's my favorite uh, TV show? And it was between MASH and Cheers. 1987, Mikhail Gorbachev calls for nuclear weapons treaty. We could use it now. Uh, this day in music. 1963. This would have been Patsy Cline's final television appearance of her career. She uh, appeared on the Glenn Reeves show and sang Antonio, San Antonio Rose and I Fall to Pieces, tragically dying in a plane crash just five days later at the age of 30. All the good ones go too young. Um, the Beatles, uh, in 1966, police were called after over 100 music fans barricaded themselves inside Liverpool, Liverpool's Cavern Club to, pro to protest the club's closure. The club had run up debts of over 10,000 pounds. The Beatles made a total of 292 appearances at the Cavern Club. Their final performance at the club was on the 3rd of August, 1963. 1970... <laughs> Led Zeppelin played a gig in Copenhagen as the Knobs after Eva von Zeppelin, a relative of the airship designer, threatened to sue if the family name was used in Denmark. 1970, Simon and Garfunkel started a six-week run at the top of the U.S. singles chart for Bridge Over Troubled Water. It's been covered by over 50 artists. Uh, Eddie Rabbit, country star, uh, crossed over to the pop charts to score his number one hit with I Love a Rainy Night. If you remember that song, you're as old as I am. Today is, 19, today is Jason Aldean's birthday in 1977. Yeah, it's about enough. So it's Monday. <clears throat> Mash, great show. Uh, taxi, yeah, that was another good one. Reverend Jim. All right. Uh, I think that's uh, that's it for the recap. Uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow. Morning at 7.45 for the market recap. Also, Coach's Playbook, we have Joe Rokop from Simpler Trading talking about his um, way to, to uh, succeed in the trading combine. He's going to join us for Coach's Playbook, and we're going to be talking about that. Don't forget Thursday, uh, just after the forecast, we're going to open up and we're going to see if you guys can make me some money. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to open up a Zoom meeting. I'm going to probably choose five to ten people who will be able to talk. We're going to talk our way through some trade ideas for the first half hour in the S&Ps. And you guys are going to be making the decisions. One way or another, we're going to see if we can't find a way to pull the idea, pull the decision, and within a really reasonable amount of time, because we know time is money in this, we're going to make the decision to take these trades, and you're going to make whole money. This is something new we're trying. We're looking forward to feedback on it. If it's the wrong time, wrong place, wrong market, whatever it is, we want you to, to tell us, and we're going to look forward to uh, hopefully adding this as something that we're going to be doing on a regular basis. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, that's going to be, again, Thursday. Um, I will put a... Zoom link out on the forecast on Thursday. I'll probably do it uh, tomorrow and, and Wednesday as well. Um, and look forward to seeing what, what comes of it. Uh, we're going to start in sim. But, you know, if this becomes a regular thing, we're, we're, we may move it on to, to, to a live live account. So you got to make Hogue money. All right. 
Um, I think that's it. Uh, Wednesday's group coaching. We'll put a link in there as well for that tomorrow and, and again on Wednesday. But uh, tomorrow, so we'll see the forecast, the coach's playbook, and uh, the recap. Looking forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. Have a good night. Rest up. Be good to each other. Be good to yourself. Be kind. And uh, say a prayer for peace and freedom. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow morning.